Hello. 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 Oh, Siyasha, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Oh, you know what happened? I didn't unmute. I just muted my mic. That's why. Okay, okay. I was okay. keep on saying good morning, but I didn't see that. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No problem at all. Happens sometimes. Yes. Okay, and uh, now uh, let us move on with our topic. Like yes. we are uh, to discuss. No, no. Are you experiencing any disturbance from my side? No. Is it fine? Uh, some dum dum song, no problem. Actually, construction uh, is going on. Okay, 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 okay. So no, no problem. Uh, it is not that disturbing. Is it disturbing you? Uh, yes, but I will close the window and it won't affect me. No problem. Okay. So we were discussing about literary background, isn't it? Yes. So, uh, how, uh, so during medieval period, during Middle Ages, uh, what influenced literature in England? That is the concept, right? Yes. So, you know, uh, this period can be divided into three. Up to 1250, it was uh, religious writings were focused in England. Later from 1250 to 1350, it was romantic literature. That is, that will focus on adventure, mysteries, spirituality, where, you know, uh, bravery and uh, quest plays important role. Quest is searching. Okay. Searching, hunting for something. See, Asha? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Middle Ages. Middle Ages in England. Uh, thing is, what is influencing literature in England during Middle Ages is the concept. So during Middle Ages, uh, up to 1250, uh, religious writings were predominant. Later, from 1250 to 1350, it was a romantic literature. Yes. After that, the third period was Chaucer's period. Okay. Okay, so during that period, you know, during the Middle Ages, this Latin was considered as divine language, as okay. we consider Sanskrit, same way right. in England, uh, Latin was considered as a divine and learning, learning and writing takes place in Old English and French was the ruling language. Yes. You know, uh, so in 1066, William, the Duke of Norman, Okay, Duke of Normandy, it is a region in North France. He invaded England and uh, he established uh, his throne in England. Uh, but uh, he introduced the French. He forcefully introduced the French in England. Even okay. then, uh, later, yeah, French became the ruling language, yet English was spoken among the common. That is why. Right. Right. Yeah, that is why uh, French was not able to succeed. But uh, we cannot say that French is something negative. You know, French words, a lot of French words are included in English literature by upper class. Right. So this right. shows that earlier, uh, the supporters of French, they were, they were using French language. After some time, they came back to their own mother tongue. That is, they came back to their own English. Still, right. in, uh, French words, they brought in a lot of French words to English. Okay? Okay. Then, um, governing language, it switched back to English again. Right. So, uh, Literature in England was written in three languages. One is Latin, French, and English. Right. So imitation of French works were there. Okay. So, okay. you know, uh, whatever you write, uh, it is the theory part I'm saying. Here, you have to focus on the works of uh, other writers also, whatever it is given. Okay, okay. Okay, you have to include Beowulf, 
the poem heroic poem beowulf sir gawain and the green knight so and other works also we have to pay much importance so uh, in exam point of view uh, you can write you can explain many things but you know you have to write about the works of other writers the works plays an important okay. role okay name of the works so variety yeah. of literature yes a variety of literature uh, during chaucer's time was romance that is mystic romantic literature lyric drama mystical meditation everything were uh, started to flourish these yes. were the varieties of literature during chaucer's time Okay. okay okay that up to this we have discussed isn't it what yes, is sir. given in yeah what is given in pearl purity patience and sir gawain and the green knight yes four poems came from the west uh, uh, that is what i say actually we have to write the title of the poem title of the works beowulf uh, sir gawain and the green knight everything you have to include that is very important yes okay and uh, so pearl is considered as a religious poem isn't it the father of a dead son so there will be a father character who writes an eulogy after the death of his son he gets a yes. vision of his son yes it is completely based on pearl is known for purity and we have got three more poems purity pearl purity and patience sir gawain and the green knight yes so have you ever go through all these things do you go through sorry do you read after the class hello hello do you yes sir after? yeah so do, don't uh, read with a lot of stress okay 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 so whenever okay. you read english you just forget about all those things whatever we discussed in the class alone you just recollect and read patiently leisurely so okay 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 so remember keep this point whenever you write your exams the title of the works is very important who okay. wrote the title name of the authors you know without any spelling mistake you have to write the name of the author and their works yes so whenever you write the name of the author and their works uh, it gives a lot of impression it shows that you have read right okay rather than writing theory part alone you have to mention about the work author's work okay okay so here now in the continuation point uh, we are going to talk about alliteration so we yes. discuss you no know, alliteration like repetition of the second letter or some sound in the uh, yes. consequent words okay so in okay. those days during the period of chaucer many many poets they started using this alliteration in order to express their protest okay they express their protest so there is a some there is some sort of unrest in the social and moral okay in the society and uh, moral values right some sort of unrest is prevailing in the uh, society so many poets during the period of chaucer they used alliteration in the poems to express their protest okay social right. and moral protest okay okay and uh, you know they have given an example so for outstand so in this respect there is a poem called the vision of william concerning peers the plowman okay it is right. uh, so it expresses it is a poem uh, that shows alliteration a revival of alliteration in order to express unrest uh, in order to express protest that is prevailing in the society social and moral protest so it has got three versions okay for version a b and c version a is prologue it was a popular work okay the vision of william concerning peers the plowman right 
it was a popular work we can say it is a popular work because uh, multiple copies are taken so obviously it okay. should be a popular work now all right so uh, there are three versions are available one is version a b and c version a is a prologue version b is a revised version of that prologue version c is okay. again the revised version for the revision right. okay and you know uh, it what it consists of life of people in england it focuses and it talks about the seven deadly sins you know have you ever come across marlow Dr. Foster, Christopher, Christopher Marlowe. Yes, 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 yes. Christopher yes. Marlowe. Uh, he has written. Yes, he has written only four plays. Okay, all yes. his plays are very successful. Damn successful. He was killed actually uh, because uh, he uh, he was in revolution. Like uh, he protested a lot of things, so he was killed. Uh, all his plays he has written only four plays four of his plays are very famous among that doctor famous uh, doctor fastest reached an un, uh, you know reached a peculiar height it was so good the play was so he talks about seven deadly sins there okay 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 not only in doctor fastest even the christianity in the bible seven deadly sins are focused from the middle ages Okay. okay what are the seven deadly sins you know pride according to christianity yeah christianity seven dead, not only according to christianity even the same concept yes according to christianity even the same concept seven deadly sins is discussed in so many poem and plays also what are those seven deadly sins is nothing but our pride okay hello Yes, ma'am. Our pride, greed. So some people will be very proud, isn't it? Very proud yes, pride. Our greed, greedy for money. Then lust, okay. lust, anger, wrath, anger. Okay. Then gluttony. Gluttony is one will have excessive appetite. Keep on eating. Okay. Okay. then jealous all right and the last one is sloth that is laziness okay okay the last one is a laziness so right. these are seven deadly sins of people actually isn't it okay so that is the main uh, concept in this poem right So, what is meant by satire? Sorry, satire, S A T I Y A R E. So, satire is a way of expression. Satire means uh, we are saying a very uh, like uh, we are saying anything against that person in a very uh, funny manner. Yes, correct. So, it is not saying against, criticizing okay. people. Yes, criticizing in a funny manner, satire. uh not criticizing uh criticizing criticizing people's stupidity or vice okay. okay that is more important so you simply we cannot criticize others based on our own uh, opinion so criticizing somebody's stupidity okay okay uh, there are many people who behave in a stupid manner criticizing one's stupidity against immoral things okay maybe superstitious immoral things one stupidity and vices okay in a right. humorous irony exaggerated manner is called satire satire plays an important role okay right so alliteration alliterative revival alliterative revival alliteration is a repetition of second letter or sound in the uh, subsequent words so alliterative revival plays an important role in all the poems in most of the poems during middle ages because poet used this alliterative technique in order to express protest against social and moral 
okay uh, that was prevailing in the society they express their unrest during this period using alliteration in the poem the famous work is uh, the vision of william concerning piers the proud man in that version uh, in that poem uh, three types of versions are available first version is version a is it is about uh, prologue so version okay. b is revision of it version c is further revision of the same prologue okay so it talks about life of people in england during middle ages and it mostly talks about the seven deadly sins okay right. yes seven deadly sins and the next paragraph you know uh, who is considered as equal to chaucer during the middle ages okay okay chaucer is a matchless person hero so mm -hmm. somebody is considered as uh, equal to chaucer that is gower g o w e r there is another poet called gower g o w e r Okay. okay, he is considered as equal to Chaucer during Middle Ages. Even okay. he used to write poem in French, Latin, and English. Okay, sir. He also focuses on seven deadly sins. Right. Okay. In the third stanza, we'll be focusing on. Uh, so obviously, we had a lot of imitators of Chaucer. Okay, yes. uh, Chaucer became very famous, so people started. Many poets started imitating Chaucer. Okay, during his time and even after that, that we'll be discussing in the third stanza. Yes. Okay, then in the fourth, in the next stanza, as a mature poet, how Chaucer is able to combine. <clears throat> courtly that is refined and middle class conventions of literature okay okay the aristocratic secularized literature so everything he is how he is able to combine so in what are the areas he used to focus how he describes his heroine how it is written there is a writing methodology everything is written in the fourth paragraph okay okay Okay, ah, uh, shall we discuss? Yes, sir. So here, ah, uh, hope you understood. Can you yes, please sir. tell me, ah, uh, at least a few points? Can you please tell me? Okay, so uh, firstly, we have talked about the different versions. Yes. Of this plowman. Alliteration. Alliteration. Yes, alliteration. Ah, uh, sorry, alliteration. Ah, uh, so alliteration. Uh, a, no. Yes. Sorry. Ah, uh, alliteration. is used by many poets yes to protest social and moral values to protest social and moral and uh, something that was prevailing the society was unrest during the period okay okay so here the alliterative revival is marked by poems poems yes okay there is a revival in alliteration a lot of changes to <clears throat> in alliteration the alliterative okay. revival is marked by poems of social and moral protest they yes. respond actively to unrest of the period okay the anti establishment satire is appropriately presented in alliterative verses and not in the conventional courtly measure so you know uh social and moral protest that talks about a period of unrest during medieval ages is expressed in alliterative alliterative revival in the poem okay, okay. and it is expressed using satire yeah. okay it did in poets didn't use courtly measure conventional that is formal refined measure they didn't use they express okay. things in a satirical way okay they started okay. criticizing the stupidity of uh, people using humorous way okay 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 uh, so uh, for example this uh, vision the vision of william concerning pierce the plowman is a uh, respectable work the outstanding poem in this respect is 
uh, the vision of William concerning Pierce the Plowman. So this poem that talks about uh, moral and social protest that was prevailing during the period in a satirical way. Poets adopted satirical method. Okay. So underline this work, this work is very important. The vision of William concerning Pierce the Plowman. Okay. So the multiple extant manuscripts <laughs> that it was a popular work and author's keen interest in the text is revealed in three versions. You know, right. the poet's interest is uh, revealed in three versions. The oh. earliest version or text A is short. Okay. Okay. And consists of prologue and 11 passes. 11 mm. passes in the sense 11 divisions. Okay. Or cantos. It is divisions. The okay. B text is the revision of a prologue and 20 passes. So next, a B text. Next is the revision of the same prologue. But it had 20 divisions. And right. there they have increased the lines. 7,241. Okay. And further, uh, the C text revises further. It has got 7,353 lines and is divided into 23 passes, that is 23 divisions. Okay. Being with the vision of Malvern Hills in the west of England, of a field full of flow, folk, it develops, the, uh, it develops into comprehensive poetry of the 15th century life. So, uh, this work you know the vision of william concerning pierce the plowman it okay. focuses on the life of common people okay okay yes uh, because plowman is also a common person now nah, if you yes. talk about plowman yes although the multiple vision include familiar allegories like uh, the seven deadly sins the poem strength does not lie in the narrative Okay, the strength of the poem, the vision of William concerning the Pierce the Plowman, it talks about indirectly, it talks about the seven deadly sins. Okay? okay, but its strength doesn't lie in narrative technique. Okay, it okay. lacks orderliness, logical plan, digression in place. Digression, you know, uh, there will be a lot of uh, diversion. Diversion. Okay. Yes. Okay, the poem, especially in its A and B text, offers a powerful contrast to the ironic detachment of Chaucer. Okay, ironic okay. detachment of Chaucer. Chaucer follows a certain technique. This poem is completely detached, completely away from Chaucer. It's okay. realistic, realistic and biting satire often reaches the visionary intensity of Dante. So here it is again another poet. Okay. Chaucer, Dante is another poet. Okay. So, you mm. know, though it is satire, mm. it reaches the intensity, visionary intensity of Dante. It's okay. religious and political message is inseparable. Okay. okay, whatever the message that gives based on religious and political, it is inseparable from its purity. Okay. Okay, that is the only thing it has got. got Even though narrative is not that good. Okay. okay. And uh, because it doesn't follow any order, there is no logical plan. There is a lot of di diversion, digression is there. Still, uh, it has some sort of intense intensity, visionary intensity of Dante. Okay. Okay. For its honest labor and uh, uh, describing something in a holy manner. Okay. Okay. Then, among other contemporaries of Chaucer, okay, other people during the period of Chaucer, Gower's earnestness is conventional and unrelieved by humor. He was so he also lacks Langland intensity. So uh, here we are going to discuss Chaucer's contemporaries. Okay. That is Gower. He is also a poet. Right. He lacks 
intensity of the land land another poet but right. in the 15th and 16th century gower was considered equal to chaucer this okay. Ch gower was considered as equal to chaucer right okay here his works are given gower's works he used to write in three languages french latin and english okay specula <clears throat> meditantis is in french so underline the work speculum meditantis vox clamantis uh, was in latin okay that talks about peasants revolt peasants revolt okay. yes a uh, hundred years war we discussed no hundred years war black death and peasants revolt okay okay so here uh, this gower's work uh, Peasants' revolt was in Latin. Right. Okay. Vox Clamentis is uh, the work that is written in language that chiefly talks about peasants' revolt. Confesso Amanitis is in English. Okay. The in the last <coughs> poem, Bowers goes beyond mere didactic. Didactic in the sense information content to write of love as an unrewarded servant of Venus. Okay, who is okay. Venus? Goddess of love is Venus. Yes, yes. So he thinks himself as a servant of Venus, and he has written uh, this confessio amanitis in English. Okay. Okay. Confessio Amanitis is a famous poem written by Gower in English. Here right. he considers himself as a servant of uh, goddess of love Venus. In the last poem, Gower goes beyond mere informative content to write of love as an unrewarded servant of Venus. Okay. okay. But even here, the framework of the story is his seven deadly sins, since he confesses to the priest. Okay. So even uh, this Gova, who is considered to be the equal to Chaucer during his period, he writes about seven deadly sins. Even mm -hmm. though he writes about uh, love as if he is the servant of uh, goddess of love, Venus. He okay. uh, refers to seven deadly sins. Okay. Chaucer and many Chaucer had many imitators in his time under little later. Okay. Chaucer obviously, if, if some person becomes famous, they will have imitators, isn't it? People used to follow them. Yes. Among these, Thomas Hockleave and John Lydgate, despite the latest fall of princes, which anticipate 16th century mirror for magistrate, are not half as successful as Chaucer's, uh, Scottish Chaucerians. Okay, so okay. Uh, here the writer is saying that we have got a lot of imitators of Chaucer. And okay. the writer includes Thomas Hockleave and John Lydgate. Okay. Right. John Lydgate has written a poem called Fall of Princess. Fall of Princess. Okay. Yes. But even after this poem, uh, he was not able to uh, reach, uh, he was not able to successful as Scottish Chaucerians, as Scottish people, Scottish okay. poets. The Scottish King James I, Robert Henryson, William Dunbar, and Gavin Douglas. The King's Square of James celebrates love and its fulfillment through trials and adversities. So here, uh, so many works are given. Okay. Dunbar's Twa Married Women and Widow was influenced <clears throat> by Chaucer's Wife of Bath. Prologue. So underline this. Okay. Dunbar's Twa Marit, Women and the Widow was influenced by Chaucer's Wife of Bath. This particular work is very important. You okay. know, we say that we have a lot of imitators of Chaucer during his period and after. 
right. among that we are going to discuss about hockley and john lidgate okay and here uh, dunbar is another poet dunbar straw married women and the widow was uh, his work was influenced by charles's wife of bath prelog okay while okay. douglas so he is another writer while douglas the palace of honor shows a depth to chaucer's house of fame so these two lines are very important okay then henryson came close to chaucer first in his fables but he added a moral so the third okay. work is henryson later he borrowed again from chaucer's troilus and crusade okay i uh, in the testament of crusade his crusade deserted by diomed curses the gods and punished with leprosy okay deeply ashamed she withdraws from confinement fear one day troilus gives her arms without recognizing her she recognizes troilus however and uh, condemns her own infidelity that is disloyalty henryson's okay. vision is grim dull okay in comparison to chaucer's forgiving humanity so okay. in chaucer's work you know the characters used to forgive whereas in uh, henryson's work there is no room for forgiving okay that is the point it is discussed so this particular paragraph is very important chaucer has okay. many imitators okay even during his period even after that should i yes. mark this uh, paragraph important oh uh, yeah it not the entire paragraph dunbar's for example you can write dunbar's okay. were married women and web was influenced okay. by charles's wife of bath's prologue okay okay the wife palace of bath is also a, a tale of canterbury tales yes of course that is why i am telling you yes palace of connor uh, was influenced by house of king okay okay and the henryson's work chaucer's troilus and crusade okay were influenced testament of crusade henry's work okay. so this is the way these three things if we write you know it adds a lot of point right so as a mature poet chaucer was able to combine the courtly that is refined and bourgeois that is middle class conventions of literature okay. the aristocratic secularized non religious literature that is common literature that talks about the common people okay yeah. earthly worldly the aristocratic secularized literature imported from 20 to uh, sorry 12th century france is built around the themes of courtly love okay okay courtesy then chivalry that i think uh, these points we discussed already yes marvelous adventure becomes the hallmark of romance adventure is the uh, main theme of romantic literature romance is nothing but a narrative genre that is adapted in english literature that okay. talks about adventure mysteries okay marvelous adventures becomes the hallmark of romance which is written in the in a new verse form octosyllabic couplet so couplet is two lines it is written in two line so okay. octosyllabic eight eight syllables yes yeah. the heroine is traditionally see how they have uh, done heroine is traditionally desirable and difficult because it was difficult desirable you know will be very pretty okay uh, pretty in the eyes of uh, men uh, okay. the heroine is traditionally desirable the de- and difficult and the knight errant moves knights errant moves through trial to uh, to the happiness of recruited uh, love apart from the uh, so night uh, he uh, moves around he moves with a lot of effort to win the hand of lady love isn't it okay 
the heroine is traditionally desirable and difficult and night a rant moves through trial to the happiness of recruited recruited love apart from refining and chastening test of love night often has to fight dragons and demons okay this is something different isn't it yeah. so night so far we were discussing about knights chivalry bravery yeah. and their courtly I, love so here a new word is used that is they have to fight with dragons also okay and demons and yeah. the ghost is yes. the elements of adventure is soon minimized okay demon is go something uh, yes demon is devil yes yes uh, the elements of adventure is soon minimized or rather turned in word as in roman de la rose of it's a name of a work okay french work yes here the yes. allegory takes over and captures the moment of the story the setting is often okay. exotic and unworldly exotic is in a foreign country okay allegory makes a springtime garden in rome roman de la rose a conventional setting for courtly love an earthly paradise okay so in the next paragraph uh, so the author will talk about seven what are the seven deadly sins and how it is connected to chaucer's work okay okay uh, so whenever you write about the middle ages or whatever it is you have to connect it with chaucer that is more important okay whatever the point might be we have got uh, many imitators of chaucer yes right so the next line should be for example uh, you have to write dunbar stoa married women and the widow was influenced by chaucer's wife of bath's prologue okay douglas palace of honor was influenced by chaucer's house of fame so okay. this is the way you have to write uh, write it in a point right and uh, so chaucer has a lot of imitators see here then gova was considered as uh, equal to chaucer yes. he used to write in french latin and english so uh, then you have to write the french work of gova okay english and latin work of gova that's more important okay then allegory is of course a distinct technique so far we were discussing about alliterative revival isn't it yes next is allegory that is indirect reference yes allegory is of course a distinctive technique of medieval literature common to courtly romances alliterative satire and the miracles and moralities okay so okay. allegory is used in uh so many type of uh, literature okay one is courtly romance hmm. refined romance allegory is used allegory <coughs> is allegory is used in miracles and morality a human okay. figure may stand for a wise okay so allegory is direct oh, sorry isn't it okay so here human figure will human being will stand for wise the opposite things okay okay so here the seven deadly sins are mentioned human figure stands for representing uh, gluttony gluttony is a person who have excessive appetite okay Then okay literary is lust okay. idleness is lust yes uselessness yes or for an institution like church a thing like a pearl can be main, main purity and so on yeah. so so many indirect references are there okay ali okay. plays a distinctive technique in the medieval literature okay, where are the areas it plays a main role courtly romance alliterative satire miracles and morality so human okay. figure stands for wise Okay, okay. 
so uh, you know uh, we we use a saligari for church pearl is purity and so on it goes chances nuns priest tail or parliament of fowls animals represented in secular allegories secular is worldly allegories okay. human beings or social classes isn't it yes animals represent indirect reference of human beings and the social classes allegorical habit began perhaps from interpreting the bible for a wide variety of people you know what is the purpose of this allegory indirect reference in order to make people variety of people to understand bible okay okay so okay. the bible the concept of bible uh, has to reach even the uh, uncultivated masses even the illiterate okay this produced the many levels of meaning gradually the literal meaning became a kind of disguise which had to be removed in order to reveal the higher meaning so you know as a result this allegory had a lot of multiple interpretation okay, okay. so they removed the literal meaning in direct reference to alone they kept in order to give a heightened effect okay so in the idealized courtly romances what is meant by idealized courtly romances idealized courtly romances as in the sense uh, the courtly romances idly 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 they are idly, idly, idly. in the uh, view of society yes uh, format like isn't it yes so in the idealized courtly romances background character speech and action are all static and formal okay in a typical courtly romances refined okay. romances background character speech and action are highly formal the ideal courtly lady for example has blonde hair so hair how the hair should be white small blonde hair okay blonde is a color okay yes golden color right okay it is not white it is golden i suppose blunt yes. hair white smooth forehead soft skin arched eyebrows eyebrows arched okay. gray eyes small round full mouth okay mouth is should be small and round dimpled chin and so on so this is considered as a ideal appearance of a courtly lady isn't it mm. these devices are an aid to idealization to the moment away from specifically individual to the abstract idea so okay. it became a something ideal love for a woman is exalted to divine love okay, okay. Uh, love for a woman is considered as something divine okay no wonder that dante had been able to combine courtly eroticism with religious ecstasy so he combined uh, the erotic nature of common people to the religious ecstasy what dante's beat rise achieves is paralleled in the arthurian romance where comparative secular search for personal perfection became the quest for holy grail so here a uh, work of dante that is beat rise is talked about isn't it okay okay uh, so can you please read for a minute yes sir no problem yeah read in your mind and explain me uh, give me 2 minutes break okay so i'll be here yes, sir. Uh, okay no problem okay, i'm talking now that is fine. Yes, yes, no problem. Please, take your own time. <laughs> so read what I discussed today, okay? Just have a read in your mind. Yes, ma'am, no problem.
Uh, yes. Shall we continue? Hello. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Shall we continue? Yes, sir. Uh, gradually, the courtly style learned to include within its opposite the realistic style. So, what is meant by courtly style? That is a refined style. Okay. Okay. That is not realistic actually. A realistic language is entirely different from refined language. So okay. each and everything, they will have some refined technique of writing. Okay. okay. Gradually, the courtly style learned to include within its opposite the realistic style. Okay. Okay. Uh, courtly style, slowly it is replaced with a realistic style. Okay. So an example of Chaucer's work is given. Chaucer's Troilus and Crusade and the Canterbury Tales represent this amalgam, this combination. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this point is very important. So whatever the point you write, you know, allegory plays an important role. Right. Okay. Uh, in that case, you have to include an example. That is uh, Chaucer's Nun's Priest Tale. Okay. Okay. Right. Same way, courtly style uh, is learned to include with its opposite realistic style. Okay. For example, uh, Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales and Troilus and Crusade. Okay. Okay. So this is the way you have to write whatever point you have you are writing. Here mm -hmm. you should uh, include the work of Chaucer. Okay. Sure. You can write in your own language, but. Chaucer's work should be included under each and every point. If it is allegory, Chaucer's uh, nuns priest tale. If it okay. is, you know, realistic uh, style, the Canterbury Tales and Chaucer's Troilus and Crusade. Okay. The realistic style may be related to the emergence of new middle class. <clears throat> the commonest genre in Fabulia. The short humorous verse tale often marked by coarseness. So a lot of changes took place. Okay. Okay. And you know, others include mime, beast epic, fable, and so on. Okay. Okay. The fabulia is characterized by certain animal vitality and grotesque, that is misshaped ex exaggeration. It is impolite, irreverent, often vulgar and obscene. Okay. Okay. The fabulia setting is economical and it is precise. Its worldly contains its world contains peasants and bourgeois, clerks, priests, nuns, jugglers, and some other knights and ladies. There okay. are some stock formula, as for example, the triangle of unimaginative dear, jealous husband sensual wife and lecherous priest. Okay, triangle love they talk about in uh, this uh, Fabelia. Okay. Fabelia, Fabelia means fable? Uh, no, it is not fable. Okay. Fabelia is another genre that seems to be impolite and irreverent. Okay. Reverent is respectful. Here it is. Right, right, right. And it is often vulgar and obscene. Mostly it talks about triangle love, we say, no? Yes, 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 love triangle. Uh, right. yeah. uh, it talks about such concepts. Okay. That is, triangle of unimaginative, jealous husband, uh -huh. sensual wife, and okay. lecherous priest or clever cook, clerk. Okay, got it, got it. Triangle love. So uh, this is a pattern even to, even to their portraits. Although the typical portrait is suddenly brought alive through the individual detail of speech, dress, and facial expression. Okay. Physio okay. Physio physiognomy means facial expression that is brought in Canterbury Tales. Okay. Okay. And uh, next one is arts. Okay, so we have got okay. only two paragraphs, so we can complete it easily. Okay. Okay. Yes. So regarding architecture, we are going to discuss. Okay. okay. Architecture, you know, uh, how the buildings were built in those periods. Okay, okay, got it. 
uh, you know, uh, they used to follow French style. Conical right. shape, small windows with glass doors. Mm. That was a uh, pyramidical structure shape was given a lot of importance. And you know, churches are built in those format. Okay, okay just check. In the medieval period, churches, you know, the buildings will be very tall with the dome like on top okay uh, small small windows will be there that is uh, glass windows will be there okay. okay as in literature so in architecture england gradually tried to work out a narrative <clears throat> version of complex and glorious french gothic style okay okay uh, after the invasion of french you know people started to imitate french style gothic style okay okay it was famous during uh, late middle ages that is during 12th to 16th okay. century during high and late middle ages i you know, searched the yes churches of medieval time yes that is what i told yes. arches will be there vaulted huh. ceiling will be there glass windows small small windows but it is a glass windows like so they followed french okay. gothic Right. French Gothic architecture, England people started to follow. It's in like French. a haunted house. Yes, castle or uh, you know churches are follow or built following the Gothic style of French. Okay. Okay. Uh, as in literature, so in architecture, England gradually tried to work out a native version of complex. So complex, glorious French Gothic style they adapted. Gothic was the characteristic mode of Middle Ages, bringing together flippant and the serious. Okay, something so flippant is superficial. Superficial. Okay. Ah, it is a combination. Okay. Okay. Bringing together Ma superficial. Yes. Then can we do it tomorrow because I have my yes. another class. Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hello. Yes.